Am I the a-hole for my response when my coworker called my husband useless? I, female 36, work at a company, and recently we had a new employee join our department, Pam. Most of my coworkers are moms. They suggested that we gather at lunch break and start conversations with Pam and get to know her more. Pam was friendly. We started talking about our typical day-to-day -day routine. When it was my turn, he answered saying that I wake up at 6 a.m., clean up, make breakfast, get the kids ready, then take them to school, then pick them up from school after work, then do chores, then clean, then do laundry. Pam interrupted me saying, Wow, so your husband is one of those useless, overgrown man-children that women try to parent along with their children then. And everyone was like, hmm. I was taken aback, but said, Actually, my husband is severely disabled. He can't work or do chores or childcare. She made a face and replied, Oh well, my point still stands that you're basically living as a single mother except, at least, your husband is not entirely useless in this case and does bring something to the table which is social security disability benefits, I suppose. But I'm sure it doesn't make up for him being an absent father and husband due to his disability. I got extremely offended that she was talking about my husband, the love of my life, and father of my children like that. The ladies were like, oh my god. So I said I didn't appreciate how she spoke about my husband, but she shrugged, saying, well, I wasn't technically lying, right? With people like your husband, there's really no point of being married. If you're acting like a single mom, then might as well become one, or go look for a real partner. I just lashed out asking what the hell she was talking about. It explained the important role my husband still has in mind in my children's lives. I called her rude and disrespectful for how she was talking about him and how she belittled him as a husband and a father and told her that her remarks about my husband could be nothing more than projection on her part. She laughed and said, Huh, my husband is a doctor. That much is enough. Need I say more? I asked her if her husband cooks and cleans after he gets home, then looked at her eyes and said, the tiredness in your eyes suggests that all housework and childcare fall on you alone, correct? She was red in the face and got quiet, looked around then got up and excused herself to the toilet looking upset. The lady said that Pam has her own beliefs slash visions about disabled partners should be, which is understandable, and she was just giving her honest opinion, but I took it too far by humiliating her and assuming her husband isn't doing anything. But according to her reaction, the answer was clear to me. They thought I shouldn't have spoken to our new co-worker in a mean way and should have taken what she said with a grain of salt as it wasn't personal. They wanted me to apologize, but I said I won't apologize for what I said, even if I was rude. My co-worker's argument is that they too received harsh comments from Pam, but didn't take it personally since they were venting about other husbands. Edit. Pam isn't the first one to say stuff like that about my husband. My own family did this as well as others. So that's why I wasn't too surprised by her judgment, but still got offended. Now for the top comments. Not stay home. What do your co-workers mean you humiliated her? Didn't she say the exact same thing about your husband before she knew he was disabled? I think you did nothing wrong. And then even after finding out about his disability, instead of backpedaling or having the decency to be embarrassed, she doubles down instead and dug the hole even deeper. Not stay home. Don't start non, won't be non. That's the big a-hole move here. She had plenty of opportunities to shut up before Opie resorted to shutting her up. Can't take it? Don't deal it. Not like Opie said anything about colleague's husband she didn't say about Opie's husband, and colleague went much further. Not day home. So here's what you learned about Pam today. Pam is an ableist. She's also a judgmental hypocrite who likely has one by one destroyed each of your co-workers in one way or another, so often that they shrug and say that's how she is. Here's what you've learned about your co-workers today. Your co-workers accept judgmental behavior as that's the way it is and protect her from being hurt. They have accepted her behavior to the point where she is okay to humiliate others, you, but if she gets embarrassed, they protect her. I don't consider what you said rude, and I wouldn't apologize. Looks like Karma's already found her, but she didn't learn. Absolutely. I noticed other behavioral issues with her, and it was obvious she's only pretending to be nice and has a completely different personality than what she's showing. I feel uncomfortable around her honestly, even before this conversation occurred. I think you hit a nerve about her husband. Her strong views came from somewhere. He may be a doctor, but I suspect he is a piss-poor husband, partner, and father. Next story is titled, 
Am I the a-hole for not showing up for a dinner with my sister when I found out she was planning to set me up? I, 34 male, am a single dad of two amazing kids. My 18-year-old son and my 14-year-old daughter. 14 years ago, my fiancé and the mother of my children died suddenly and it destroyed me. She was my everything. We were supposed to grow old together, raise our babies together, share a life. She was my best friend for 15 years and my love for six. After she died, my family expected me to date again, find love again, marry someone and find another mother for my kids. But I have never had any interest in meeting someone else. I focus on being a good dad and enjoying my life the best that I can. I never wanted to move on, and I don't feel like that's something that will ever happen for me. About two years after my fiancé died, though, my sister started getting pushier. She told me I needed to find someone who could make me happy that I deserved better than staying single for the rest of my life. I told her that it's my choice, and if that's what feels right to me, then it's what I'll do. For the most part, she lets it go once I say no, but she brings it up often enough that it has affected our closeness. Two years ago, we stopped talking for months after she brought my kids into this plot to set me up, and was disappointed they didn't want to take part in it. When I found out, I was furious. And I thought that was the last of it when we reconciled because she saw I was willing to not speak to her. And her apology was the most genuine it had ever been. But then last week, she told me she wanted to hang out. We were supposed to go to dinner in her favorite place. But a few days before that, I found out she was actually trying to set me up with this woman she knows. Once I found out, I just refused to show up. That dinner was Thursday. And yesterday, she was furious that I hadn't shown. She said they had been waiting for me. He asked her who they was, and she said she had brought someone along for me to meet. I told her I no longer trust her after this. My parents sent me a message last night that it was rude to be a no-show, and I should understand they just worry I'm putting my life on hold and denying myself happiness. Am I the a-hole? Well, not the a-hole. Your sister is not respecting your choice. I would not have showed up either. I don't think any of my family particularly like or respect my choice. The others push less because they know I will not tolerate someone trying to go against my boundaries and wishes. Apparently, I now need to stop talking to or seeing my sister because she will never learn. It's great that your kids get it and didn't take part in her plans. I don't get why she can't respect your choice. She doesn't get to decide what makes you happy. This all the way. It enrages me when people try to use kids in their idiotic plots. Particularly this one. Hey kids, want to help me get you a new mommy? Uh, no. Just hell no. Not the a-hole. You're not ready to date and they should respect that. I get that your family wants you to be happy, but this is not helpful at all. I also hate the implication that you can't be happy without a significant other. I know it bothers them that I spent my 20s and now into my 30s without a significant other or even dating. But you know, I'm living my life the way I want, and I don't see myself ever dating. But that should be my choice. I'm old enough to decide this for myself. Not day home. My mom never dated after my dad passed. I asked her why once, and her answer had stuck with me through the years. I already had the best. Why would I want anything else? If you have met your soulmate, your life is complete, even if they have passed. I relate to that a lot. I was in love with someone who was truly my best friend and we didn't get enough time. But she gave me the two people I loved the most in the world and I am forever grateful for that. Next story. Am I the a-hole for asking my boyfriend to stop sharing everything with my sister? Hi, I'm 24 female and have been dating my boyfriend, 26 male, for five years now. We grew up together as neighbors and were friends for a couple years before dating. I love him so much and I want to marry him. His family is great and I adore them all. Ed is great with my family too. He also formed a great relationship with my sister, 21 female. But the issue is that I think their bond is too close. My boyfriend and I live together, but he spends a lot of time with her. Albeit, I am sort of busy. I'm currently in grad school for engineering, so I have to go to my classes. My boyfriend works full time. My sister is currently taking a gap year, but that one year has extended from when she was 18. She comes over when I'm in seminars slash classes. They have tons of inside jokes and share the same sense of humor and taste in movies. It makes me feel left out. But when I try to include myself, they both stop being so enthusiastic and acting like it's super awkward to have me there. My sister and I were close growing up, 
but started drifting when I went to uni. When my boyfriend isn't there to talk to her, she becomes kind of cold and sometimes says rude things. Once, she told me to my face that I'm not good enough for him, that he deserves better, which made me cry for a couple days. He also gets her gifts for the most random achievements. Like, he got her a present for making it through the week. Even though she doesn't do anything as she isn't currently working or trying to pursue a hobby or interest, she's just taking it easy. Her own words. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad my boyfriend and my sister are friends. But my major problem is that my boyfriend tells her everything. Literally everything. He tells her things he doesn't tell me and talks to her about me and our relationship. She knows all our issues and good parts, to a level of detail that I wouldn't even tell my closest friends or parents. She even knows the grades I got in my midterm slash finals and what I think about my manager. I work part-time to contribute to our apartment, but I also get paid for my research which goes towards our needs as well, which I feel is unnecessary for her to know since I didn't tell her myself. I ask him to step back a bit and stop telling her things about me and our relationship, but he was shocked and told me that I'm an a-hole for even requesting it. Now I feel guilty. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before the little update. Not the a-hole, but I'm 90% certain your sister and boyfriend are hooking up while you're in class. I'm 100% certain. I reserve 10% that they're just having an emotional affair, but sister at the very least would like it to be more. And when it tells you that someone deserves better than their current partner, is talking about themselves. Not day home. They're both grossly out of line. It are at minimum having an emotional affair. Kick them both to the curb. I don't see how this is salvageable. I wrote way too many lines in my judgment where emotional affair would have cut it. Think you hit the nail on the head. Who is he in a relationship with? You or your sister or both? There are so many red flags here that I would be taking a serious look at your relationship. Keeps Opie for money and the sister is a side check to bang when Opie is at home at this point. The level of we know each other very well is very unsettling and it sounds like an emotional affair. However, I think there is more to it. Opie needs to take a step back and find out. Edit. Thank you all for your responses and advice. You've literally made me reconsider everything that I thought in you. The consensus is that there is something shady going on with my boyfriend and my sister, which just makes me want to vomit. I'm now reading into every interaction and conversation, and I feel so naive for not noticing the red flags. I'm going to take your guys' suggestions and set up some nanny cams in my apartment. Either way, it'll be good security. If nothing happens, then it'll be reassuring. And if something does happen, well, I'll deal with that after. I'm going to drive to the store right now to pick up the cameras. I'll try to update soon, hopefully with positive news. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband to suck it up? I am the main caregiver of our baby, six months old. I deal with a lot, including a medical condition that occasionally paralyzes me from neck down. It can take a few hours until I can move my hands when it happens, and sometimes even a whole day. My legs take longer. For the last two weekends, suddenly my hubby gets a high fever. No other symptoms. No COVID we checked and claims he is too sick to even watch the baby for a minute while I pee. Last weekend, I gave him all the space he needed, went to my folks' house and took care of him every few hours when my parents watched the baby. I was frustrated, but I understood. During the week, he was okay again, worked till late and acted normal. Yesterday, a few hours after I started getting paralyzed, he suddenly broke with a low fever again, crying out that he is sick and he can't take care of the baby. With only one arm working, I took care of the baby all night long, terrified that it would go paralyzed as well. Whenever I begged for help, like change his diaper or make him a bottle, he yelled at me and got mad. This morning, I lost all my limbs again, and my jaw was stuck for an hour. After that, while he complains that he's too sick and I need to handle the baby all day, I yelled at him to suck it up and take care of his child because it is not safe at all. I can't move my fingers. How can I keep a baby from falling, or feed him, or help him at all? He got really offended, saying I should be more compassionate to his fever and how cold he feels, and that I should find a way to unparalyze myself so he can sleep. I got even more mad, considering how many doctors told me that I cannot stress myself out of it, or it gets worse. He also said I am the a-hole, since it seems like I don't believe his mild fever is as severe as my condition. 
Am I the a-hole for not agreeing with him and telling him to take some responsibility for his child? Edit. My paralysis happens every few months, and I know an hour beforehand that something is wrong. You always call my husband or my emergency babysitters. I have a few. It only happened once before today since the birth, and I wouldn't give birth if it wasn't under some control. It is the first time in my marriage that he acts like this about my condition or the baby. I am not a neglectful parent just because I am disabled. I would contact family slash babysitter before, but I couldn't move my fingers well enough to use the phone. He asked my hubby to call someone, but he refused because he was too cold. My sister-in-law came as soon as I managed to pick my phone up. I just needed him to watch the baby until then and after that. Not day home. It sounds like he's faking honestly. He's fine during the week, but when he has to help with the baby on the weekends, he's sick? Even if he was faking when you have a kid, the kid comes first. Sometimes you have to take care of the kid when you are sick or hurt. It just happens. Kids bring a lot of colds home and everyone at home catches them. Every parent has to take care of a kid when they feel like crap. It is how it works. The fact that he thinks he should get a pass because he has a fever, which is honestly the least crappy symptom he could have, even though his wife is paralyzed, is a sign he is a selfish a-hole and a bad parent. But if he gets a fever again, he needs to see a doctor. Recurring fevers are just not a normal thing. And he certainly wouldn't want to pass anything along to the baby now, would he? This has to be rage bait. No one is genuinely that whiny and self-centered and absolutely stupidly careless? On the highly, highly unlikely chance this is real, it'd obviously be not day home. Your husband is absolutely useless. It's pretty obviously faking sick to get out of parenting. You don't have a partner. If you don't get a partner, what's the point of being married? Wish it was, really. I'm sitting here crying as this is not the man I married. Update. Thanks to your advice, I found a voice controls on my phone and can now use them. You had to talk with him without him yelling at me that he is cold and too sick to deal with me. I'll try to stay in another room tomorrow when I feel better.